President Bola Tinubu has once again spoken against a scenario where 90% of the country's revenue is spent on external debt service and many development challenges are still facing the country. He said that this practice is not sustainable. Now, there's uh, three billion. Remember, we just got that a couple of weeks ago, a uh, loan for crude from Afrexim Bank. Of course, that's adding to the debt, whether we're paying with cash or with crude. So, some people are talking about debt for nature swap. Uh, it means financial transactions in which a portion of a developing nation's foreign debt is given in exchange for local investment in environmental conversation measures, you see? And we just talked about uh, renewing our coal mining. Even the president promised that. Well, having that at the back of our mind, as the debt management officer said, that Nigeria's total foreign debt for the period ending March the 31st, 2023, went up to 49.85 trillion naira from 46.25 trillion naira in December 2022. How do we manage all of this issue of debt, the president's determination to ensure that we don't use 90% of our revenue to service foreign debt? And then we also have the coal mining perhaps coming back on the one hand. We have Mr. Agu Ojowu. He's a senior consultant at the Africa Practice. He joins us from our Abuja studio. Thank you so much for your time this morning, Mr. Ojo. Um, tell us, first of all, explain to a lot of us to understand this e, uh, concept of debt for nature swap. What's it about? Thank you, Edi, for having me. Um, the debt for nature swap concept is basically an agreement where a debtor country and a creditor organization come to an agreement where a part of their debt is pretty much forgiven in exchange for commitments for investment in environmental remediation, nature conservation, investment in renewable energy and the likes. All right, so um, I guess you think that Nigeria could tap into this to deal with these huge debts that we have. I'm using about 90% of our revenue to service that doesn't, it doesn't sound sustainable. Yes, absolutely right. It's not sustainable. We've spent about 90% of our revenues on debt servicing, and we've averaged that for about the past three years. And the debt for nature swap almost comes as a silver bullet. It's not an easy fix, but it's an opportunity that Nigeria can potentially leverage to address the debt challenges that we have and simultaneously address some of the nature concerns that we have. We have desertification in the north, where we are looking at financing for the Great Green Wall. So debt for nature is a potential solution in that space. We also have other environmental challenges that are facing different parts of Nigeria. We have flooding across the Benue and River Niger plains. We have flooding and oil pollution in the Niger Delta regions. And the debt for nature swap is an opportunity for us to access some of this financing that can be channeled towards ameliorating these um, environmental challenges that we have. The International Institute for Environment and Development estimates that about $100 billion would be generated from debt for, de debt for nature swaps in the global south, which includes Nigeria and most parts of southern Africa, southern America as well. So when you hear the, the, the promise of the president and even the reports we just played, where some individuals believe that Nigeria does have revenue to make and uh, answers to some challenges by mining coal. Does it worry you? Um, yes, it, yes, it worries me. I understand the plight of um, some of the coal miners. I understand the plight of some of those that have benefited from the coal industry. But globally, the world is moving away from such heavy carbon emission fuels, and we are in a transition for which Nigeria developed its own energy transition plan. So we're in a process of transitioning from heavy carbon fuels to more low, low carbon fuels. We have an abundance of gas, which is our ideal transition fuel. We have an abundance of natural resources, which can be leveraged for generating renewable energy. So I think the best way forward is for us to help some of these coal miners transition along the way. So some of the coal miners could also participate in the deployment of some of these newer low carbon energy sources be it gas, be it renewable energy. So I think for now the world is moving away from coal and I think Nigeria should follow suit as well in line with our, our commitments to various agreements on reducing our coal, our carbon emissions and achieving net zero commitment by 2060. 
Yeah, but, but, but some would argue that you still have big countries like the UK, Germany, you know, with the, with the war in Ukraine, we saw a lot of them turn back to coal. And even uh, some financial obligations that they were supposed to give to emerging economies have not been fulfilled. Um, yeah, that's, that's exactly right. Sometimes it's like what Nigerians say, that that condition make refuge bend. Those, are, those were almost um, forced reactions to situations. But right now, the impact of climate change is hitting harder on sub-Saharan Africa. We have minimal um, capacity to deal with the impacts of climate change. The global north, the more developed countries, Europe, the United States, they have a wider buffer to deal with the impacts of climate change. But you saw the levels of flooding that we saw last year, and we saw the amount of lives and property that was lost. It was in billions. Nigeria doesn't have that amount of buffer to deal with the climate, impacts of climate change the way these European countries are. So that's why they can still afford to go back. But right now, it's a case of survival for us. And we need to be able to bite the bullet now, chew the bitter medicine now, and make the right decisions so that going forward, we can have a more stable environment and deal with less negative impacts of climate change. All right, so how would you suggest that the government, you have to convince President Bo, uh, Bola Tinubu first, I mean, because he said it in his campaign that he was going to revive coal mining. But how do you convince him now, and what are some of the initial steps that could be taken if he decides to adopt this concept? Um, so I think, I think it goes beyond just the president. I think it also goes to the voter populace because President Tudubu is the president for all and he's also concerned about the coal industry. But we need to make everyone understand right from the elementary level of education, we need to have a climate awareness program. We used to have environmental studies. We need to bring that back for people to understand a life cycle analysis of climate change and its impact. If we decide to mine more coal, if we decide to have more carbon emissions in the air now, the impact of that, we need to understand the entire life cycle of it and know that this might not necessarily be the best way. And there are alternative ways. We have an abundance of gas. Majority of our gas reserves are st still remain untapped. Those are alternatives that we can look at. What we just need to do is, as a friend of mine said, is this has to be inclusive and the long-term planning has to be airtight. So we need to ensure that we carry everyone along, show them what the long-term planning is, and that way I believe we can su successfully get the buy-in of both the voters and President Tinubu as well. Yeah, well, it looks like you have a lot of convincing to do to both uh, the government and the people. But thank you so much for your time this morning, Mr. Agujo, Senior Consultant at Africa Practice.